another episode of true talk we're so glad to have you here with us again yeah. so we have a very interesting topic mm -hmm. a very interesting discussion mm -hmm. hmm. we're going to be going into premarital sex mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about you know the different myths that <laughs> that we have in existence about it we're going to be debunking those myths we're going to be you know talking about um, different things different things about it but I believe we're going to be really blessed by the end of this true talk mm -hmm. before we go into to the episode proper let's go on this short break be right back so you can see from the words of jesus christ that marriage was created for a purpose and if you marry if you recklessly marry the wrong person you miss that god's given purpose and that's why this evening i would like everyone to make a confession and say i will not miss it i will, I will not, not miss it. it for this reason a man uh -huh. will leave his father and mother and be united i miss you too baby and i said i will not miss it oh okay brother what is running through your mind hugh you're running through my mind well, Kay, the pastor is saying some great things. You need to pay attention. Kay, Kay, what are you doing? What? Sister Esther. Brother Kay. Are you allergic to kisses? Yes, before marriage. No, 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 no. There's a devil in, in this house right now. We need to rebuke the devil. He's here in this room. G give me your hands. Look, Kay, I feel emotionally weak and vulnerable right now. It'll be dangerous for us to stay together. Esther, I'll be strong for us. Be strong for yourself first. Esther! I can't hold you. I, I can't even touch you right now. Just please leave. The devil, he's still here in this room. This is the time that we should stand together. No, this is the time that I get on my knees and I fight the devil myself. Not even a hug? You need to leave. You know what? If you're not going to do it with me, then I'll just pray alone. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Esther, Esther, why? You can pray outside of my house. No, no. Oh, my sweet Jesus. You who holds the key of David in your hands. You shut every door that no man can open. I command every door of disappointment to be shut in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. S S no, no. Thank you. Wait, Amen, brother. We can Amen. Still pray Thank about you. This. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, so we're going to be going into the ideologies, the myths that we really need to talk about. We need to just table them down and talk about them. You know, it's sad that um, premarital sex is becoming the norm in this generation, that even believers don't see anything wrong in it. You know, they um, glorify it and they defend it with literally everything. Even with scriptures, mm -hmm. they defend it. It's, it's so sad. So we're going to be talking about the different ideologies that, you know, we need to critically look at examine and debunk so the first ideology is that people believe that we should test if we are compatible hmm. which is <laughs> you should test if you and your future spouse is compatible so you need to you know test it on the bed to see <laughs> if you are compatible emotionally spiritually physically <laughs> it's funny how they believe or people believe sex is what will test sex your compatibility, compatibility. Mm -hmm. you know there is a whole lot more to marriage than sex what do you think about yes, it should be compatible on other levels exactly first. spiritual first is very important mm -hmm. spiritual compatibility then intellectual compatibility yeah. Yeah. i mean if you are compatible in bed but you guys cannot even like mm -hmm. come together and reason you can't the same yeah. exactly so what's that so compatibility of of sex is yeah it's important but it is marriage it should yeah. be marriage, not mm -hmm. before not be marriage. marriage. Exactly. Not before marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing about sex if within marriage is that you guys grow even in that compatibility. Yeah, exactly. So what yeah. if you have sex before marriage and then you You're like, not <laughs> <laughs> Whereas within marriage you you grow. It, it's it's something that grows. So mm -hmm. it it shouldn't be that's that's not a reason for you to have sex before marriage. Because you want to test compatibility. Compatibility. Yeah, you guys have said it all to be honest. It's not 
Like, what is even the guarantee that if you guys are compatible, compatible before, before marriage, mm-hmm. after marriage, you will still, you yeah, know, be compatible? What, what if you're like, oh, okay, we're compatible then now, we're not compatible again? Compatible. It's, so it's, it's not, it's not, it's not at all. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not at all. all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. And I and, and I believe you're already getting or maybe some, some thoughts, pillars are dropping in your mm-hmm. mind about it. So the next idea that we're going to talk about is to see if, you know, you are capable of satisfying your partner. You know, that is quite, that is, that you know, is... funny enough, I think I've actually heard somebody tell me this before that mm-hmm. he does, he does that so that when, by the time he gets married, he'll be able to satisfy his wife very well. And I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. So I had to, you know, try and use the word of God to convince him and, you know, just help him see from a it's different perspective. Sad, it's actually quite sad, to be honest. No, that should not be a reason why you should, you know, break all your break mm-hmm. all your boundaries and break all the um, laws that you have in your mind about keeping yourself safe because you want to see if you will satisfy each other. Mm-hmm. It's not be, just like just like you know we've said, sex should be in the confines of marriage. Mm-hmm. It has no business outside of marriage mm-hmm. because outside of marriage, you're supposed to spend the time understanding each other, mm-hmm. knowing each other, growing together, talking about the future, mm-hmm. building the foundation of the future. But sex, that that level of intimacy has no business outside the confines of marriage. Mm-hmm. So please, if you are using that as the reason to you know engage in sex, the truth is just that you are craving and you are burning with passion Mm -hmm. and you are just looking for reasons to do it Mm -hmm. it is not a good enough reason Mm -hmm. to have sex all right so yeah the one who created sex himself god Mm -hmm. has ordained that it should be done within the confines of marriage marriage. doing it outside you cannot bring complete and full satisfaction to somebody when you are going against the order that the creator of sex has put Mm -hmm. and then your body is not yet the person's it's not it doesn't belong to the person so you can't give someone what is not his or her so really it is just meant to be done within marriage and nothing else Mm -hmm. yes because just just like you said, your body does not belong to him yet. So it's 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 almost like he's stealing what is not mm-hmm. yeah. his yet. Yeah. Because the truth is, once you give your body to him, you still take it back from him and go home and go about your daily activities. Then you meet him again and you give it to him. And then it's like it's you know, it's it's so sad that you know, people of the world will call will now um term ladies that have engaged in sex mm-hmm. to who, who, they, they will call them tested products. Mm-hmm. It's quite sad, mm-hmm. but the truth is if you can if you can ask them questions. They will literally say these things that we're saying now because mm-hmm. they've tested it and they had no, they had no, um, what's the word? They had no pledge mm-hmm. or vow that you know you give each other on the altar at the altar. Mm-hmm. So please um, keep your body. Your body is a prized mm-hmm. possession. Is your prized possession? Just the keep it. The, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. There, are, see, there are so many things I will talk about in, in <laughs> this in, in this talk. So just mm-hmm. stay tuned. All right, so the next ideology that we're going to be talking about is to prevent cheating in marriage. Wow. <laughs> Come on, oh, just, no, just talk about it. <laughs> well, the truth is, marriage does not change you. It is who you are before you got married and you <laughs> after you got married. If I just if I, it is you, exactly. you just bring down the room first. <laughs> so if you are sleeping with mm, someone yeah. who is not your spouse before marriage, mm-hmm. there's a very huge likelihood yeah. that you'll do the same during marriage yeah. mm-hmm. and that means sleeping with people who are not your spouses you know mm-hmm. fornicate i become sorry adultery mm-hmm. and the like so sex never copying you know satisfying the hunger before marriage will mean you also look for some, yes. some a way to satisfy that hunger yeah. when you're married mm-hmm. so you have to discipline yourself you have to train yourself that mm-hmm. no i'm going to quench this i'm going to deny myself of this yeah very very sure. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean it's also just like you know some people who say that when they get married people that are addicted to masturbation exactly they say when they get married they no. will not they will marriage will if cure it's it. an addiction yeah, masturbation yeah. is an addiction so yeah. even when you get married you would still continue doing it if you don't deal with it exactly. before you get married so exactly. having sex before marriage does not automatically mean that okay well, you're not cheating marriage yeah. now that's and a big lie for somebody who maybe you know some some men try to use this as a reason to you uh, make some women sleep with them to tell them that i really need to you know have this because i just need to, i just i won't be okay <laughs> some men just have that you know just tell those lies that i'm okay with if you think you are the solution to that man's problem, no, you are not. Yeah, because no. if you exactly. give in, he will still keep coming back. He'll come back, back again and again. Find and again. Somewhere else. He'll find someone so else. It's, that's it's, not it. It's quite sad. And, and just like, you know, just like the scripture says that the devil is the father of all lies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
this is this is a deception that is so prevalent in our society today yeah. just like you have rightly said this cannot prevent cheating in marriage if somebody has an issue with you know sleeping around it is not sex that will solve his problem it is self-control yeah, so that person literally has to seek the face yeah. of god to imbibe the fruits of self-control mm-hmm. the person has to go to god to get his deliverance yeah. To get his deliverance, you know, and that is just why the Bible says flee from every form of sexual immorality. The Bible didn't say battle it. The Bible didn't say wrestle it. The Bible says flee because, you know, just the word of God is true and it's sharper than every than, than any two-edged sword. So the word of God is so, is so, is, is literally the key, is our food, is, 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 it is a solution and it knows exactly what we need. Mm-hmm. So for the scripture to say flee, yeah. I mean, we've heard so many stories of people saying that, you know, I tried to fight it, I tried to fight it, but I don't know, I just couldn't and then I felt masturbation mm-hmm. or I just couldn't and then I fell to his, mm-hmm. you know, lawyers or then, or um, or maybe he touched my cheeks so or he touched my hair and I, and I just lost myself. <laughs> you know, the Bible knows exactly what you're going through mm-hmm. and then it says flee yeah. because he knows that you cannot do it your with your power. power. Yeah. You cannot fight it with your power. Especially when you've gone down that line. Yeah. So please, such a person, it is self-control he needs. And if you truly love that man, then you would help him yes. by yeah. by by uh, making him accountable to somebody, yes. not you particularly. Can mm-hmm. I come with you? Yes, but then it's good. It's good. It's good. You bring somebody else into the picture, maybe yes. a leader, yes. and then yes. and then you also provide you know different new trends for him, like books or self-control, mm-hmm. like sending messages, yeah. sending um, short clips, short. scriptures. Mm-hmm. Just help them because it is not sex that they need. You are rather fueling his problem, fueling yeah. the fire that is burning in his bosom. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Um, All right. Mm-hmm. So the next um, mytholo- can I say mythology, <laughs> the next ideology that we need to debunk is the saying that the Bible is outdated. Mm. Like, <laughs> hey, my goodness. Oh, my God. I just, we have to say that. Like, it's 2022. Oh, How are you still believing and holding on to the doctrines hey, of the Bible? I'm like, ah, hey, that God ever hidden in my heart I mean, that I may not oh, see me again. She said heaven and earth will pass in But my word will never. never. And heaven and earth has always still passed in. So why do you think the Bible has passed in? I don't understand. <laughs> you know, Jesus says something. He said that the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Mm-hmm. They are spirit and they are life. Which means, which means the Bible is literally where you go to to get life. Yes, it's our source. Yes. It's our source. I mean, the Bible says, how can a man keep his ways pure? Yes. It's by obeying the word. And by keeping the Bible, okay. keeping the word of God in his heart. And the devil knows this. That's why he's he's, he's making people believe that the, the yeah, word is no longer the solution. Yes. Yes. But that is it. It's mm-hmm. quite sad, though. It's quite sad. As in, and I even have a personal experience. We we um, concluded this um, 30 days Bible uh, marathon with my husband. It's like a reading, going through the Bible in 30 days, wow. you know. And I was able to participate in it. And I, I, I just have to say that I saw the Bible in another light. Mm-hmm. And people were testifying on how much they were able to read the scriptures, spend hours with the scriptures, and that they were revived. They were strengthened to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to, to stand firm on their faith. They were strengthened to not get angry or or, 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 or not fall into loss. And people, so many testimonies. Mm-hmm. People having dreams of encounters and all that. And then I can also testify because the Bible was so fresh and new. Mm-hmm. And truly, the scripture that says that your word is new every morning mm-hmm. is not a joke. Yeah. The Bible is new every morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was just able to get so many things from the scriptures that I had never seen before. Mm-hmm. And I've come across the same scriptures, but mm-hmm. I've never seen it in that light before. The Bible is life. Mm-hmm. And if you know what is good for you, you will stay close to it. Mm-hmm. In fact, a day must not go by without you reading the scriptures because mm-hmm. it is life for your soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is life for your soul. So please anyone that is telling you that the bible is outdated look at it was written 2000 years plus ago please run from such person they want to suck your life source they want to detach you from your life source may god help us in jesus amen. name amen. amen and they just to back up what you said the passage mm-hmm. i would use is um, psalms 191 verse 19 that says mm-hmm. turn my eyes from worthless things mm-hmm. and give me life through your word wow. so the, the word life. gives life life gives, the bible gives is life. life it's not just um mere you know it's not just like any other literature Book. Some mm-hmm. people just say that. No, it's it's 
spirit and life. Mm -hmm. So the spirit breathes on on the words and yeah. it comes to life and it gives life. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't just handle the Bible with levity yeah, like any too. other book that yeah. we read. No, it's uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, and then oh. some believe that some believe that there are some things that the Bible does not treat. So there are some aspects in our lives that the Bible does not. Mm. The Bible is complete. Is complete. The is so complete. There is no. There is nothing in your life that you that 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 you know you're that you're searching for that you won't find a solution for in the Bible. The Bible is complete. It's very holistic. But it takes you know you have to discipline yourself to study the word, meditate on it, yes. and ask the Holy Spirit Allow to the Holy help Spirit you lead to you. Breathe life. Yes, it's yes. very true. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for that point. All right. So another belief is that um, some are afraid that the guy or the girl <laughs> will leave them if they don't yield to yeah, sex. Like prove your love to me. To prove your love. <laughs> It's quite sad because if that guy is going to leave because of sex, he will leave anyway. Yeah. In yeah. fact, it will be it will be an advantage to you for him to leave because it means his love is tied yeah. to yeah. pleasure, yeah. To, yeah. To, yeah. To, to sex, to what he can get. Mm -hmm. You know, entering marriage with such a person mm -hmm. that has such mindset is scary. Yeah. And it's pressure. So dangerous. Pressure. Yes. Yes, and through your marriage, you're going to be pressured for different things yeah, that he yeah, could yeah. get. If it seems that um, you can't fulfill his desires in in, mm -hmm. in marriage because of one thing or the other, maybe maybe you're pregnant or the, or, mm -hmm. or then you're tired, mm -hmm. he will see you as a burden. He will see you as his partner, mm -hmm. as his life. You know, it's quite sad to enter marriage with someone that has that kind of mindset. Yeah, that you're not around exactly, yeah. exactly. Probably you're schooling and then um, and then you're not together for maybe three or four days. Mm -hmm. Will you answer that you're not around? So I just have to. I have to. Exactly. Ah, exactly. uh, please. Exactly. Let such a person leave. They do not belong with you. Mm -hmm. They don't belong with mm -hmm. you. Please let such this a person leave. Of love. It not. is not. <laughs> it is not. Thank you so much. Yeah, so another belief that some people have is that everyone does it, mm. that it's normal, that um, it is it is actually strange if you don't, mm. if you have not tested each other. People literally mm. laugh at people for being virgins. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> ah, it's so sad. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Mm. It's so sad. Please do not do not be um, discouraged mm -hmm. if you are still holding on. Yeah. Do not do not feel that you are the odd one out for not you know giving your. Um, to be spouse, that's what he's asking for. Mm -hmm. God is proud of you. Mm -hmm. And just like Daniel, you should be proud to stand firm for what you believe in, for the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, Daniel and his three friends were the only yeah. one that yeah. didn't among taste, many. among mm -hmm. many, didn't taste the king's meal for two years. Mm -hmm. They stayed pure for two years. I'm so sure that they must have been that's, that's like another yeah, level okay. of pressure, like yeah, a ridiculous yeah, level of pressure. Like, exactly. That, that, that <laughs> them <laughs> insulted them, that don't you know that you're supposed yeah. to be a romance yeah. if you're in Rome. Some people probably would have even tried to, you know, tempt them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so please stand firm, even though even though your friends are doing it. Don't, yeah. Please, yeah, please, yeah, please stand roommate, firm, your roommates. And they're yeah. laughing at you. Exactly. God is not after the numbers. He's not concerned that you're the only one. He just said, if if it's me, are you standing? Don't worry, it's fine. Yeah, Stand because one with God is a majority. It's a majority, exactly. Yes. So it's not about you being the only one. It's about mm -hmm. the fact that you're with God on this, you're on God's side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the most important side you can ever be on. Yes, and then and then just for somebody who has a spouse that is that is giving that is giving into the temptation or or the luring from the spouse's friends. Mm. It's not for you to just outrightly say you're a sinner, leave me, depart from me, you're a devil. But you can, with love, bring that person back to the scriptures, just to win him over to see to um to uh, make them realize that they are going astray. Come back to the Lord. I know you are being tempted, but this is what the Bible says, and we are sticking to it. You know, if he still insists and he's putting pressure on you, then I think it's time that you review your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Consider breaking. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still on the issue of um, you know, it being a norm and everything. If you ha if you notice that you are working, the company you are keeping mm -hmm. are pro sex before marriage, like they are always preaching yeah, it or yeah. you know praising it or pushing it. Just you have to you have to detach yeah. because mm -hmm. the thing about the company you keep is that yeah. it's usually very subtle. The influence of people around is very subtle. Mm -hmm. You begin mm -hmm. to you know be considered. You begin yeah, to be thinking yes. that maybe mm -hmm. it's not bad after all. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You don't. You don't mind. You don't just outrightly make a decision like. I'm going to sleep with this person. Yeah, it's too. very subtle. So it's if gentle. you notice that you are surrounded by people, you know, sometimes you have a complaint that you can not but have, like your yeah. roommates, you cannot like push him out. Mm -hmm. But if your friends, the company you keep, mm -hmm. are people who are saying, 
let's do this, let's do this. Yeah. It's good to it's good to, it's good to have sex for marriage. Then you need to change yes. your company. Mm -hmm. And then just to add to that, just like you said, it's very subtle. So they want, even though even though they might you know come with you, they might come at you with that um, belief that how far have you tasted that mm -hmm. or have you tasted them? And every day I say no, I'm a Christian, child of God, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and they are you know looking at you like s you like you're not in vogue and this. It is, it is, it's, it's very easy to even just block, block, block like mm -hmm. that. But like you said, it's very subtle. They can use another way to come at you. That's why the devil is a very, very sneaky funny, devil, yeah. very corny demon. <laughs> <laughs> what he can do is that he can make the, such friends to start talking about their escapades when mm -hmm. we are there. And then, and then they can they, they can just see on how much or how fun it was and how exciting it was and how you know you know they bonded with their boyfriends by doing it you know, and then and then you are there and you are listening mm. and you are listening the to seed it. Is being the yeah, seed is yeah. being sown, mm. and then the next day this the friend comes over and then t and then talks to you what they learned with the nights they spent mm -hmm. with their supposed mm -hmm. to be spouse. Mm -hmm. And then and then you are listening and you are listening and listening. The seed is being sown. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if maybe when you're with your to be spouse and then it starts maybe it's dark, it's dim and it's same sister. It's getting it's seven p. Where are you going? I said, no, it's okay. I'm okay. We are strong. We are we are believers in Christ. And then something happens that night. And then you're wondering, how did it happen? I mean, it was very subtle. It's because you 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 let your guard down. You were not aware. You were not um what's the word? You are not discerning enough to see the lurings of the devil. So it is very subtle. So we must be very you know cautious. That's why the Bible says in Psalm one that blessed is the man who doesn't. Who walketh not, standeth not, seated not. So exactly, it's a, it's a, it's a, a process. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just about sitting immediately. You were first yeah, walking with them. Yeah. Let's work together. Let's just together. Let's, you know, it's, it's a part. So just, yeah. Have then of course, as you are standing, you are already listening yeah, to yeah, them. Listening. As you are sitting, you are already comfortable in their midst. You know. That's it. Glory to God. All right. So before we move on, just go on this very short break. Be right back. You welcome oh, back. Man. Yes, you welcome back on this very interesting talk show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on, why should we not have sex before marriage? Aside from everything that we have been saying from the beginning, mm -hmm. we will just you know highlight a few points why we should not have sex before you know, we get married. Number one is because the Bible says so, so. and the Bible is God's eternal word to us, mm -hmm. and He speaks to us through His word, which is the Bible, and He intentionally instructed us not to have sex before marriage, that the marriage bed be undefiled. Mm -hmm. Specifically, in the book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen, verse four, it says, "Marriage is honourable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge." So you you can you can definitely see how God detests sexual immorality mm -hmm. because he packaged sex in such a way that is to be enjoyed by the husband and the wife in the sanctity of the marriage union so you having sex outside of marriage is an aberration mm -hmm. against you know the word of god mm -hmm. so god has instructed it because he made sex just like you said mm -hmm. and he has given us his words to live by yeah. so there are other you know reasons yes. why we should it, not have sex says that, still on that bible says no god mm -hmm. says no Says that when you sin against any other sin, you sin you know, inside sin. the body. But the sin, but the sin, sexual sin, is the sin against your against own your body. body. And mm -hmm. God, and your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God wants you to preserve and so protect it's and it's you know sanctify that body for His glory. So yeah. committing sexual sin is a sin against God and the body. Mm -hmm. And God says no. He says no to it. Just yeah. to add more, you know, Bible backing. First Thessalonians four verse three to five says. I mean, for this is the will of God, your mm -hmm. sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, mm -hmm. that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, mm -hmm. not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Mm -hmm. So it's it's right there in the Bible. It's mm -hmm. there so in the Bible. So many scriptures. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so another reason why you should not have sex before marriage is because sex is deeper than the physical. Yes. It's way deeper. It's not just it's not just the gratification of our flesh we're just having fun there's a transference of spirits mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. on it's a blood covenant it's yeah, a yeah, blood because... covenant even if mm -hmm. you're using the the protection mm -hmm. of the world <laughs> even if you're using one pill or one thing or yeah. the other spirits does not <laughs> spirits can't you can't you can't hinder you can't hinder spirits mm -hmm. with you know physical means 
you know. So sex is beyond the physical. Yeah. It's transference of spirits. You you do, you don't you don't know. You don't negative or positive. Like you don't know the background of this person. Yeah. You don't know the kind of bondage yeah. and demonic stronghold in the family of this person that you are sleeping with. You have no idea what you are getting into, and you are willingly submitting your destiny on the bed of sexual immorality because God is not backing you in that because you are outside of the marriage union. So you have no backing. You are you are you really you actually have no protection. You have no protection. You know so. That's why it's people who, after having sex, they, 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 mm-hmm. they realize that things are no longer yeah. working out. Academics exactly. just, you know, goes down the drain. They are more distracted, they are, they are confused. Their career, they're just, yeah. or they are manifesting certain traits mm-hmm. that they never mm-hmm. had before. Yeah. So because they have submitted themselves to, it's like sex is like a passage. Yeah. And so they've allowed certain negative spirits to pass into their lives. Yeah. So you don't want that. You just, mm-hmm. you have to just protect yourself and honor God and live for God and, you know, block such mm-hmm. entrance. And then, I mean, you know, when you get married, there's an aspect of, you know, saying the covenant, but what actually unifies the Mm -hmm. union to make you one is the sex that, you know, unifies the covenant. So it is beyond just physical, it's beyond beyond physical. physical. So Mm -hmm. please and please. Let's keep it in there, you know. <laughs> yes, you know, and just just even to buttress what you said that um that sex is is another level of intimacy yes. beyond knowing each other, beyond exactly. understanding each other. You know, it's funny how the scriptures to talk about sex it says and Joseph knew, knew his, his wife, wife yeah. and Abraham knew yeah. his yeah. wife because yeah. Yeah. sex is not physical. Yeah. Yeah. Just to show you that there is a knowing yeah. that is beyond the physical, physical. that is to the spiritual, that's to the emotional yeah. aspect. So mm-hmm. the their, their emotions are literally bonding, mm-hmm. their yes. spirits are becoming one, mm-hmm. they are becoming one intellectually as well. Mm-hmm. So sex is not it's not a joke. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. fact, the physical aspect is like just 10% of sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to it. And then you willingly doing it over and over again, you are implicating mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. You are getting yourself into trouble. Mm-hmm. Another reason why you should not have sex before you get married is the point of unwanted pregnancy and STDs. It is prevalent. It's so funny how a particular country was, I'm not going to mention the country, but that country was literally characterized as having HIV in mass. Mm. That person, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know the country. Yeah. It's so sad. Mm. It's because it's because of sex yeah. flying around, unwanted sex, and then unwanted I said unwanted sex, <laughs> unwanted pregnancy. Mm-hmm. As as well, you know, it's it's sad when you bring a child into this world and you have no plan to take care of that child. You have no plan to cater for the child, to you know, raise the child in the way of the Lord. You know, the Lord created sex mm-hmm. to produce godly offsprings, mm-hmm. and then you are bringing a child into the world. And then the sad thing is how they are now legalizing abortion. The it's devil sad. is really, really it's a sad. manipulating demon. It's sad. <laughs> It's sad that not only did he, not only has he made um, youths burn with passion and, you know, to push them into, Mm -hmm. you know, premarital sex, he has also provided a means to, a a way out in court to terminate the results of that sex, Mm -hmm. abortion, which is literally murder. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Please do not put yourself in that terrible position whereby you'll be thinking, should I abort? I'm still a child. I'm still a teenager. I'm going to school. I have a bright future. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Just avoid it. Consequences that you don't need to face. Mm-hmm. Just avoid it completely by doing what you should do. Just stay, just mm-hmm. stay close to God. And if you know you have issues with self-control, deal with it in the place of prayer, studying, mm-hmm. and help yourself by devoting yourself to materials that would help you by reading books that will strengthen you. That even if anybody wants to come to you to talk about anything, you know exactly what to say yeah. to shun the person yes. and to and to even also wake the person up. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yes, then we have a couple of ways on how to stay pure. Do you want just to just some already? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the last point again about studying God, God's mm-hmm. word, being close to yeah. God, you know, drowning yourself and in, in God's word and in messages materials and materials and all yeah. those things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. But ultimately, like um, David said it, he asked the question, how can a man keep his ways pure by obeying the word of God? So that's like the primary thing. Num- number one is just the word, the word of God. Mm-hmm. Let the word of God be your guiding principle. Mm-hmm. Let God be your strength. Yes. You know, when we try to talk about it, many people always say that, 
I will not. I will mm-hmm. not. Exactly. It is not. It's not by yes, power. It's not by your power. Yes. The Spirit of God. So let yeah. God be your strength. Let your mm-hmm. draw strength from the Lord. Don't mm-hmm. depend on your strength. Many people have said I want, I want, and yeah. they will still do. Yeah. <laughs> and then one thing is that you not allow fear because some some people are also afraid of not doing it, mm-hmm. and that fear cannot be a reason what now makes them fall. So just you know, don't allow fear. So God's word, your strength from God. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then it. don't put, don't put yourself in a position compromising. The, position. Yes, don't put yourself in a compromising position. I mean, for example, if you are in, you're in church and you're having urges, you, normally you, you you cannot say okay, you cannot just have anybody <laughs> and start doing something. Yeah. But if you are in a, in a quiet place, quiet, there's no, the air is blowing, you know, <laughs> there's soft music or something. You know, you are literally setting up yourself for failure. Yeah. So. Don't put yourself in a position where it to be hard for you to be easy for you to easy fall you to into fall. the temptation. And another important thing, one thing that is also to you know, give yourself strong reasons why. Mm-hmm. Have your strong why is why you are not doing it, mm-hmm. and constantly remind, remind yourself, yourself because in this world that we are, there's a lot of noise, and you know, like we've mentioned all the roots. So mm-hmm. if you keep hearing that and you are not constantly reminding yourself of why you are not doing mm-hmm. it. Those your wives will start bending for the wives of the world. Mm. So you you don't have a good reason. A brother that has a good reason and has mm-hmm. like I mean somebody well, told me word. that a, it, yeah, yeah, sure. somebody used scriptures but to get his sister to sleep to with him. He literally, as in coined. he coined this. I don't know how he did it. Whoa. And the lady, you know, believed and fell. And I'm like, it's just it's just literally so sad. So have your strong wives yes. so that when the devil brings the temptations mm. and you know, so men, so even some brothers. That this is the ladies will willingly offer them. Yeah, they will offer it for free. So mm-hmm. it's all what you have, you know, eaten, what you have mm-hmm. swallowed, mm-hmm. what you have stored up that will help you to stand firm exactly. in the face of temptation. Exactly. See someone like Joseph. Mm-hmm. I mean, Potiphar's uh, wife, she must have been. Hey. Hey. But he no. was able to he said, How can I do this and, and sin against, against my God. God? So I think it also boils down to having the fear of God. I feel yes. in these days, exactly. the fear, I don't know, a lot of people have maybe lost the fear of God. I don't know, I don't know how to say I guess yeah, the fear of God true. is not so, you know, firm in us anymore mm-hmm. because it is where well. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really. No, really, really. It is well. So I think having that fear of, I mean, David. Joseph, he said, How can I do this and sin against, against my God? God? So it wasn't even about Potiphar that is his boss. It wasn't very even about true. that. It it's his bossy power. So it's not about, hey, what will my pastor say? Mm-hmm. What will this person say? What will my parents say? No, it's not about that. God. It's about God that sees. I mean, there's something my parents always say that if you can't say, God is looking at you. Mm-hmm. Can't see. So sometimes when I'm by myself and I know nobody's watching, I'm like, hey, God is watching. <laughs> It is about God. It is not about what the world is saying. This is about you, you know, standing firm and you know, obeying what God has said, obeying oh, yeah. God's word, and you know, help. Like Ella said, depend on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it is not by your strength. Mm-hmm. What you can do, like Bible said, flee. So mm-hmm. when you are there, you say, Holy Spirit will strengthen me. Say, lie, my dear. The Bible says, flee. flee. So run, run, yeah. run. Don't Very don't true. think you are strong. You, anybody can fall. That's the truth. Anybody mm-hmm. can fall, but mm-hmm. God will help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Yeah, um, to just add to that, for those already in relationship, it's good to have um, standards, yes. have boundaries, have boundaries. Because if they say that if you don't stand for any something, you can fall exactly. for anything. Right. anything. So have a standard. This is not going to happen in our relationship. Mm-hmm. If you don't set such, and you know what, let's, let's just you know, let's just go, let's, let's just go, go with flow. flow. Yeah. <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah, you, you, I mean, so it's so it true that because you ask some university people. And you okay? So, I, what's your view on sex before marriage? Like, I, I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, exactly. You need to have a firm, a firm stand, belief that it is a no go area. Stand that even yeah. if they wake you up and say, hey. Well, are you, what what do you what's your stand on sex before marriage? It's a big no. no. Don't 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 be ashamed to say no. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed to say no. And then there are, there are benefits. I mean, there are benefits of you know keeping, keeping yourself yes. and obeying God. Yes. There yes. are benefits yes. of yes. obeying yes. God. It's yes. God that will reward you. It's yes. not man that you, that you are looking at. No, yes. God will reward you for obeying His mm-hmm. word. So uh, please have that, especially people in school and younger people. Just mm-hmm. have that firm conviction and say it's a no no for me. It's a no. I'm not compromising on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very true. And then just to just to round off, 
what would really help? You know, we say it's a lot that, and I do mind, is the devil's mm -hmm. workshop. Mm -hmm. So what would really help is when you are engaged, when you're productive. occupying yourself, when you're productive. Mm -hmm. There is a particular couple, um, Michael and Jessica Kulianos. Jessica is um, Benihim's daughter. And they have they have a ministry together called Jesus Image. Before they got married, <clears throat> I usually see them, and uh, you know they would go for ministrations with their team. They will go to places together. They will go on outreaches. You know they will minister the gospel. They will give foods and gifts to people. So they were busy. They were doing things as they were caught in as well. They weren't just you know lounging around, playing around, you know, just chilling. But they were doing this, they were busy. Mm -hmm. And even if probably you're in a long distance relationship and then you see your, your partner probably once a month or once a week, you can be busy on your own. Mm -hmm. Just get busy, get, you know, just get busy. I, I usually I usually count on some people that, what are you doing exactly when you say that's how it happened again today? <laughs> I said, what did you use this day to do? What exactly did you do yeah. today? Are you busy? Are you reading? Do you, do you have a target? Are you, are you, are you putting pressure on yourself to finish something before the month ends mm -hmm. do you have do you have you know goals that you want to meet that would really help you to get focused on what the Lord will have you do okay. you know so let's just let's just have these factors in mind and I believe the Lord will help Amen. us Amen. in Amen. Jesus Sorry, name one quick one I remember like the whole intimacy thing comes in a package some people feel they can test you know, they can you know start you know just do for play if you don't go all the way it's not it's mm -hmm. not a bad idea but if, this one that you are doing one step one step you end up you know falling <laughs> into every so it's it's a package the whole intimacy for play it's a package so just abstain from every there's time for everything mm. abstain from from everything and when the right time comes you will enjoy you will enjoy over enjoyment you will over enjoy so just you know this moment that you are still single mm. devoted to you know doing the things of god and then when you marry you have everything you want to stop you. Nobody exactly. stop you. Yeah, I'm not a sin. <laughs> and, for those, and for those that have already, you know, mm -hmm. fallen into it yeah. um, in one form or the other, it's not too late to pick yourself yeah. up. Don't say that, okay, we've done it. Let's just continue okay. doing it until yeah. we get married. No, no. It is, it is, it's not a coincidence that you're hearing this at this time. Yeah. It is actually a reminder. It's a, it's, it's a calling you back mm -hmm. to what should be. So don't feel like it is too late. It is never too late to go back to God. So just, you know, take these points down. And from now henceforth, from now henceforth, just um, talk to yourselves and say that we're going to do things the right way mm -hmm. from now henceforth and have somebody that you're accountable to. Mm -hmm. Believe the Lord will help you in Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, Tolu, can you pray for us? Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this talk. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the words that have come out. We ask, O oh God, that you you will minister to to your children, yourself, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the grace for as many out there that are single, oh Lord, out there in relationship. Father, we pray for the grace to stand firm on your word, mm -hmm. to stand firm for you in, and say no to premarital sex in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. We pray for as many people that may be struggling in this area. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come through for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will help them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will grant them the strength to stay no and stand firm for you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will continue to give us the grace to stand firmly in you, to obey your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And for as many people that are, you know, battling or struggling in their relationship with you, Holy Spirit, I ask that you will reach out to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will strengthen your relationship with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you will help them, help them to develop that discipline in the place of of prayer, the place of studying of your word, and just build that intimate relationship with you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that for many people that are single and also trusting you for their life partner, you will connect them in your own way in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we also pray for as many people that may have fallen and the devil just seems to want to keep them in that pit of, of guilt. We ask, oh God, that your mercy will reach out to them Amen. in the name of Jesus. For your word says that your mercy and loving kindness are new every morning. We ask, oh God, that you will stretch out your hand of mercy towards them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Help them to forgive themselves and help them to realize that there is forgiveness in you. Help them to come to come to the light of your forgiveness and understanding of your forgiveness for them in the name of Jesus Amen. and help them to stand firm and pure in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Thank you so much. Don't forget to follow us on our social media yes. platforms on Instagram and on Facebook, True Talk with Ted. And um, you can send us an email as well, True Talk with Ted at gmail.com. Thank you so much once again. Till next time. Bye. Never, 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 never